My name is W. Bruce Devoye, and I am an international lawyer and a civil litigator, international civil litigator, and a constitutional lawyer. I am pleased and honored to be counsel for Ambassadors of Self-Determination. I am equally pleased and honored to be here today. He's remarkably similar to Nelson Mandela in that his charismatic approach to securing freedom for his people, advocating for peace, and advocating for self-determination. So Namdi Kanu is a leader of the Igbo people. Now, before I allow you to go straight to watch the remaining video, I go like to touch some things. Our brothers and sisters, both in Biafra land, both in Nigeria, both in Despera, should understand that the video you are about to watch is about the discussion of Mazen Namdekano. Why Nigerian government refused to release him? And to let you know that he did not commit any crime. For those of you whom has been brainwashed that he committed a crime, in the whole world, no place someone exercising his right means committing a crime. It's only in Nigeria that when someone decides to exercise his right, they call it crime because the leaders are criminally minded. They know send you and I, as far as they are concerned, waiting they want, so far as they are seeing the Naira change into dollar, send it to the account overseas where their children will be coordinating it. Schooling right there. And some of the war powers also, their bankers and every other person will accept such bribe, such dubious corruption. Why you and I and our families in Nigeria suffer. Even some of us who are in desperate when we will send money to our families, they will continue to complain that it was not enough. This is because now as you speak, Tuba of Yam is 10,000 Naira or even more than that. Are we talking about all that things? The suffering of the people. People are committing suicide. These are some of the things that the Kano saw before he started fighting for Biafra restoration. And this restoration of Biafra is why he's in jail today. Not that he's in jail. They have kept him in DSS custody. In remind one man cell for almost four years now. So it's good that some of you should understand this, that he did not commit any crime. And the IPOB and then the can and not terrorists. Nobody in the world has ever proscribed them as terrorist group. They are everywhere in the world. It's only in Nigeria. Because why? Because their leaders are criminally minded. In fact, they are the terrorists. But they prefer to call innocent freedom for the terrorists than themselves who have been terrorizing the people of Nigeria. Answer protests, they accused him for causing the problem, whereas the government were the ones that recruited talks. And when they saw that talks could not stop the heat, they went and recruited soldiers. They called them non soldiers, so, but these are non soldiers where they called them. Believe me, now soldiers will recruit from that bit of Boko Haram and flying terrorists. They are the people that murdered inside protesters. But he did. Do you know what in Tinibu they talk about? He they claim, say, Nam the Kano. Now I cause the problem for NSAS protests. It's good made the world hear about them, know about this thing, what they happen. Because when people go first, say they will start Wahala, many people not talk, say why they know wait, why they don't exercise patient. Because things don't they go wrong. If they no one release them, why no don't no, they don't carry and go prison, go keep them. Make it no say he there for prison. They know how many years he deserve. He still have to keep him in custody. When DSS, they torment him, they give him fake food, give him fake injection, make it for die. Why would they talk this in? Because when he, if he die, many people no go allow, make any Obama arrest. Because now we go not snack him, not kill him. Even his own children no go arrest. No don't get us of mine. We don't take him go. Now they can't be small meat. Where people go feed key and go free with it. I would like you to somehow watch the video. The remaining video. And when you are watching, please do not forget to share this video, like it, and subscribe to this channel. 
Thank you so much. Remain blessed. My name is W. Bruce Devalle, and I am an international lawyer and a civil litigator, international civil litigator, and a constitutional lawyer. I am pleased and honored to be counsel for Ambassadors of Self-Determination. I am equally pleased and honored to be here today. He's remarkably similar to Nelson Mandela in that his charismatic approach to securing freedom for his people, advocating for peace, and advocating for self-determination. So Namdi Kanu is a leader of the Igbo people. And in that regard, as I said, he is remarkably like Nelson Mandela. Namdi Kanu is our opportunity to get it right. So if you have some hesitation about supporting Namdi Kanu, because there's been some talk of him being a terrorist and the iPod being terrorist, that's simply not true. But I'm here to submit to you even more important. Nelson Mandela was considered a terrorist. As a matter of fact, Nelson Mandela was not removed from the United States list of terrorists until he was 89 years old, and I believe it was 2009, when he was almost dead. As we've said, evidence has come to light that not only is Namdi Kanu jailed, and let's just make sure we're what we're talking about is crystal clear. Here is a man that is a political leader, a peace-loving political leader that wants freedom for his people, wants his people to no longer be subjected to apartheid-like discrimination and genocide, and he's jailed because of that. He's sitting in jail as we speak today. And I would really be delighted, and my job would be done, if a great number of you said, why haven't I heard about this before? Why isn't everyone talking about this? Why is this something that seems to only concern the Igbo people? Why don't we know about this injustice? Because I submit to you, there is no greater injustice right now on this planet than the continued unlawful incarceration of Namdi Kanu. Now, it's easy to say unlawful, and I'm a lawyer and I often say it, but in this case, we have not one, not two, but three separate panels, judicial panels, that have said his arrest, his rendition, and his continued incarceration are absolutely illegal. Not because it's not a good idea, not because we don't like it, not because he's the leader of our people or a leader of people that we favor. The Nigerian courts applying Nigerian law made that determination not once, but twice. You have two court judgments, it's so obvious, that said, he must be released immediately. He must be returned to his place of citizenship, which is Britain. And he must be paid a billion Nara, or 500,000 Nara, depending on the court. The United Nations has looked at this case and determined that there are rampant, gross human rights violations, and they demand the immediate release. So Mazi Namdi Kanu represents just as Nelson Mandela represented his people, Mazi Namdi Kanu represents over 50% more people, 42 million as opposed to 28 million. So how can we not move mountains, do everything in our power possible as human beings to free Namdi Kanu? It's fundamental, basic Nigerian law. And that has been disregarded because Nigerian law has been utilized by the courts twice to say, release Namdi Kanu. Again, let's make sure we understand he's in jail solely because of his political beliefs. He's caged solely because of his ethnicity and solely because of what he represents, which is freedom. Freedom from oppression, freedom from genocide, and freedom from apartheid-like discrimination the UN determination, it, they found directly, not obliquely, not as a recommendation, but a direct speaking voice that the UN seldom if ever takes, almost never takes, that there was a violation of Nazi, Mazi Nazi, Namdi Kanu's human rights because he was detained arbitrarily and without law, 
He was detained without due process. He was detained without the right to use his counsel. And he was unlawfully kidnapped and secreted to a secret location. He was disappeared. He was all of the horrors that you can imagine that a nation could do short of actually killing him, which would be his genocide, all at once. Namdi Kanu has languished in the darkness and the silence for far too long. We call for someone, anyone or Congress as a whole, to stand up and say, enough's enough, free Namdi Kanu. So when this message gets out to the members of the United States Congress, I submit that those that want to strike a blow for freedom and also preserve their name for posterity, this would be a good start. So I think we have reason for hope. Without hope, everyone gives up. So I'm here to tell you there's hope. Finally, the freedom of Mazi Namdi Kanu is of paramount importance in beginning the process of remedying the religious and ethnic persecution in Nigeria. It's a bigger issue than him. The call free Namdi, Mazi Namdi Kanu is a call for human rights and obedience to the rule of law and good government that must be made from throughout the globe and heard in Abuja. 50 million plus, 60 million plus Igbo worldwide will cherish the day of Kanu's freedom, and the world will celebrate, much as it celebrated the release of Nelson Mandela. And we can all be part of that. The courts of Nigeria have spoken. The United Nations have spoken. Now is the time for the American people and Congress to speak, and the world to speak, to lend their voices, to condemn Nigeria's action, and to encourage them to do what is required of them in compliance with the rule of law and international human rights. If the United States is responsible in any measure for causing the release of Namdi Kanu, the world, West Africa, Africa and the world will see and celebrate the United States as the beacon of human rights, freedom and liberty and the rule of law that it always has been, that we always imagine ourselves to be and we aspire to be. Simple act, one man, one voice, one statement we can attain those great benefits and that sense of accomplishment. Fellow Americans, lovers of freedom, champions of human rights, our mission is to advocate for the political vulnerable and persecuted around the world. My name is Evans Wonko and I'm the chairman of this organization. This man is being held in Nigeria against all legal and court order that has said otherwise. What happens on the other part of the globe cannot and must not be ignored. We have one world and we have one globe. We must not ignore justice or injustice anywhere, anywhere it happens. All the lovers of freedom, champions of human rights must not and cannot ignore just injustice anywhere. Nigeria has turned into a dark nation. It's not the same place that I grew up. And ladies and gentlemen, you cannot drive darkness away with darkness. You can only do so with light. We are gathered here today to advocate and ask all the lovers of freedom and champions of human rights to be the light that drives away this darkness in the country of Nigeria. By doing the right thing, releasing this innocent man, Mazi Namdekano, who I've called the Mandela of our era. My name is Ben Wankwo. I am the executive director for Ambassador for Self Determination, a human rights advocate here in the United States. Our mission today is to call for the release of Mazi Namdekano. We are calling on the Nigerian government. 
to listen to the cry of the people. Men and women all over the world that have extended a hand of friendship to Nigeria in respect of their democracy to ask for release of this man. He should not die in prison. We have watched the whole thing from the beginning. We followed the judicial process. So now here we are. And I'm asking Nigeria to release Mazin Nandi Kano for the right reasons. Do not release him because the United States says so. Do not release him because Britain and members of the British oligarchs say so. No. Do you not release him because Biafran people are protesting all over the world, calling for the immediate release of Mr. Kano? He too has a mother that died as a result of this struggle for freedom. He has cried out to people, to Nigerians, to pay attention to this injustice because Mazin Nandekano is ill. He is sick and needed medical attention. He's been denied of the proper medical attention. He's been starved. He's been denied access to his attorneys, especially those from outside Nigeria. When will it end? It is called justice and the rule of law. This justice and the rule of law is not just for the rich and famous. It's to all men, both great and small, as advocates of human rights and members of our ambassador for self, for self determination, we believe that currently Nigeria is at a crossroad. And we all know what that is. Nigeria must choose between good and evil. They must choose between righteousness and unrighteousness. They must choose between freedom. For all men, irrespective of tribe, religion, and your political affiliation versus oppression and mental slavery of her citizens, where people are subjected to chronic poverty, no job, no freedom. And it's become the order of the day to fundamentally violate human rights. That's why Mazen Namde Khan remains in prison today. We are not here to be confrontational. We are not here to intimidate or to insult. But we are here to appeal to the conscience of those in leadership in Nigeria to please release Mazen Namde Khan. Why? Because you can do it. Don't wait for tomorrow. You can do it today. You have a chance to join the global community in the journey for justice for all men. You can show the world with a, a logical, demonstrable proof by allowing Mazin Nandekano to go home to his family. Uh, this is a long journey, but I do believe deep in my heart that the end is near. Martin Luther King said that in the end is not the worst of the enemy that hurts. Rather, it is the silence of friends that are supposed to speak, but choose to be silent. And darkness cannot drive away darkness. Only light can do that. 
So on behalf of Ambassadors for Self-Determination, I'm calling on all people in diaspora. You are the future. You are the hope. Be the light. I'm calling on U.S. Congress and the senators to be the light because injustice anywhere left unaddressed will eventually become injustice everywhere. I also appeal to my brothers and sisters, the African Americans, we are cut from the same cloth. We just arrived here differently. Do not forget from where you come. And this is the time to rise up. Speak up. Do not be silent and be the light. Because if we collectively can do that, Mazi will walk the street again. Thank you.